so the next thing we will look at is ensemble uh, methods. Uh, so here uh, the idea is that you can combine the output of different models to reduce the generalization error, right. And these models could actually be different paradigms. So it could be like a logistic regression model, a SVM model, a Nibase model. You have trained all of these three separately using the same uh, data. And then at test time, you are using the output from each of these and then combining those outputs, right. So a simple way of combining could be you could just do voting or you could just uh, take the average. So suppose each of this is a classification problem, a two class classification problem. Then this guy say predicts a distribution for 0 and 1, this guy also predicts a distribution for 0 and 1, this guy also predicts a distribution of 0 and 1 and the final thing could be just the average of these three distributions, right. So you could just take uh, these as the final prediction, right. So this is something which is again used as a form of a regularizer because now you are not relying on a single model, uh, three different models are going to uh, make the predictions, right. And now this uh, combining these models, right, uh, as I said, one thing could be they could be different classifiers, right, as was the case here. One is logistic regression, the other is SVM, the other is Nibase. Or it could also be the case that you have the uh, same classifier, uh, but trained with different hyperparameters. So you could have like all three of them could be neural networks, but say with different number of layers or with different number of neurons in each layer. They could be trained with different features. So you remember our input data was n dimensional. So what I could do is take uh, suppose, um, yeah, so the input data is n dimensional, okay. So this is what it looks like. So I could train the first neural network with some m less than n features, okay. And I could train that second neural network with a different m less than n features, right. So I am just taking a subset of the features and training different neural networks with different subsets uh, of n, right. And I could take many subsets, uh, many m sized subsets of n, right. <coughs> or it could also be the case that this is uh, simply trained using different samples of the training data, right. So I have a million uh, training data points. I train <coughs> Uh, say uh, three or four or five different neural networks, each trained with a random 900k sample taken from the million data points, right. So now the training data for each of these is different. Now each of this is kind of overfitting to a different uh, sample of the training data. And now if I am going to combine their outputs, then since they have overfitted on different samples of the data, I might get a better generalization error, right. So that is the idea. So this is called uh, bagging when you have an ensemble who's in different instances of the same classifier. Right? So I have the same classifier here and for a given data set, we construct multiple training sets by sampling with replacement, right. So I have this original training set of say million points and now I'm going to construct multiple training sets from it by sampling with replacement. That means I'll uh, sample one subset, then I'll sample, the, it's not that I'll throw away that. So if I have a million training points and if I train the first, if I draw a sample of 200k and that's the training data for my first neural network. Now I'll not throw away this 200k, I'll put it back and again take a random sample of 200k from the original 1 million samples and that will be the training data for my second uh, neural network, right. So that's what sampling with replacement uh, means. And the ith instance of the classifier is trained using TI. Now uh, here each model is trained using a different sample. So as I said now, if each model is going to overfit to a given sample and then you are asking multiple such uh, networks for their output, right, and each of them is overfitted to a different training set, right. Then uh, if you take the combination, then it, you might get better generalization because each of them is catering to different data. They have not been able to overfit to the overfit to the entire uh, training data that you had, right. Now, uh, when would this actually work, right? that is the question, right. So now let us consider, you suppose you have k logistic regression models and say each model makes an error epsilon i on the test example, right. So you have k models and model 1 makes an error of epsilon 1 on a test example, model 2 makes an error of epsilon 2 and so on, right. And these epsilons, suppose they are drawn from a 0 mean normal distribution, right. So one way of thinking of it is that epsilon 1 comes from a 0 mean uh, distribution with uh, variance sigma and epsilon 2 also comes from a 0 mean variance and so on, right. Uh, <coughs> but this is a multivariate normal distribution. So you have variance of the epsilon i squares as v, okay. 
and you have the covariance between any two uh, epsilons as c, right. So, this is uh, the covariance uh, matrix that you could think of, right. Now, the error made by the uh, uh, model is you can take of it as the average uh, error, right. So, suppose there are uh, on a given uh, st uh, sample, right, there are k uh, models. So, the average model, uh, the error made by the average prediction is going to be the average of the k errors that was made. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So, you are taking, you had k logistic regression models, each one of them was making an error of epsilon uh, k and then you are combining their predictions. So, the average of the uh, and suppose that you are just combining it using the average of the predictions, right. Then the final uh, 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 error would be the average of these individual errors, right. So, that is all that is being said here. So, now if you look at the expected square error, right, that is what we always look at. So, this is what the expected square error lo would look like, right. So, this was computed from one training sample. Now, you want to compute the expectation over all the training samples that you had. So, this is what the expectation would be, right. And now, we are just going to again do a series of steps one after the other and uh, nothing great conceptual happening there. So, I can just write this, this is a sum of uh, squares, right. So, first of all, I will take the 1 by k which is a constant outside. So, 1 by k square, it will come out as it is. Uh, and then now, this summation epsilon i the whole square, right, is the sum the sum of a square. So, it is epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2 plus epsilon 3 k the whole square, right. So, now when I open up this, when I do this multiplication, I will get epsilon 1 square, epsilon 2 square, epsilon 3 square kind of terms and I will also get epsilon 1, epsilon 2, epsilon 1 multiplied by epsilon 2, epsilon 2 multiplied by epsilon 3 and those kind of terms, right. So, that is all I am saying here. So, you will have a set of terms where you have epsilon i multiplied by epsilon i itself because the inner loop is just on i equal to j. So, these are the square terms that you will get and these are the cross terms that you will get, right. So, that is all these two summations are indicating. Now, the expectation of a sum is the sum of the expectations. So, we will just open up the bracket. Right. Uh, so, yeah, epsilon i square. So, this first term I can just write it as epsilon sum of all the epsilon i squares and now this is what happens, right. So, this is what I get. Now, this of course, is the uh, each of this as I had defined was the variance, right. And there are k such terms. So, this will just be k into v and similarly, each of these is actually the covariance, right this is the covariance between uh, epsilon i and epsilon j because the mean is 0 and there are uh, k into k minus 1 such terms, right, because this is uh, the outer loop is k and the inner loop is k minus 1, right. So, I mean not really, but yeah, the sum the number of terms here is k into k minus 1, okay. Uh, yeah, that is how it is. So, this is the answer that you will get and now there is a k square in the denominator. So, this is what you will be left with, right. So, the expected mean square error is actually going to be when you are using the final prediction as the average of these k classifiers, then your expected mean square error is going to be given by this, right. Now, the question that we are interested in is when will bagging work, right. So, let us try to see from this formula where do we go, right. So, now if the errors made by the models right were perfectly correlated. So, in that case your v would be equal to c right. So, this uh, uh, this would actually become v right if they were perfectly uh, correlated and now if you do this addition you will just get the answer as v. So, the mean square error remains v which is the same as the mean square error of any one of the models, right. So, if I take uh, epsilon 1 as uh, like the first model, then the mean square error was epsilon i square, the expected value of epsilon i square, which was v. If I take any one of the models, then the mean square error was v and now even with the ensemble, the mean square error is v, right. So, if the errors are perfectly correlated, then I do not get an advantage and that makes sense that right? I have just trained like 100 models, but all of them are making the same mistakes. 
So on average also I will make the same mistake, right? so I will not get any benefit. Right? But now if these models happen to be the, so this was one extreme, right? the other extreme is that if these models happen to be such that their errors are completely uncorrelated, right? then your covariance matrix would basically contain 0. Right? So, you will have all zeros there. Uh, so, then in that case, what you get is 1 by k v. Right? So, this term disappears and you are just left with 1 by k v. Right? So, what does that mean? So, that means that, uh, uh, yeah, so that, uh, that means that your, uh, for with any single model, your error was v. Now, if you have taken an ensemble, your error is 1 by k. Right? So, these are the two extremes that you have. On one hand, you have that the models are perfectly correlated. In that case, you do not get any advantage. On the other hand, you have the case when the models are perfectly uncorrelated, right? And in that case, you get a good reduction in the mean square error. And in reality, you would lie somewhere in between. There would be some minimum correlation. The smaller the correlation, uh, which is this side, the more uh, benefit you will get the higher the correlation between the models, the less the benefit that you will get. right? So, this is just to give you an intuition about uh, uh, what bagging is and how bagging works and how bagging works as a, a regularizer. right? So, now it is improving the, uh, what does a regularizer do? It improves your expected error on the uh, test instances. right? And we have seen that the expected error on the test instances, which is this MSE formula that we have written here, there is a scope for it to improve if your models that you have trained happen to be uncorrelated and uh, only if they are perfectly correlated, you will not see any advantage, but anywhere in between here, you will see some advantage. right? So, that is the basic idea that is being uh, shared here. Okay. Uh, so, bagging by definition is when you have the same model train yeah, different, uh, different subsets of the training data, you are not doing different features. Ha, you could even do that, right? That is also a possibility. Okay. So that's all about bagging. Uh, the next topic that we look at is dropout.